Hi guys, welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, we got three little image to text hover effects for you today. We've just done these with the Divi thing. Somebody asked if we could do them with Elementor Page Builder, no problem at all. As you can see, we got a little twirl in there, we got a little spin in there, and we got a just simple fade in here. Really easy to do, a little bit of CSS code, but as usual, any code I write, I'll put down below the video. So let's get started. I'm gonna hit the edit with Elementor button. Once loaded, let's go down, I'll create a new row. Let's drag a text editor in there. I wanna add a couple more columns, so we got three in a row here, so I'm gonna Right click on the little row icon there. I'm going to hit add new column. I'm going to do that one more time so we've got three of them. Great. Okay, well, let's make this the shape that we want it and give it the padding that we want it. So I'm going to go into the text module itself. I'll leave it on the default there. Let's just give it a title perhaps. And I'll call this image one. And we'll make that into perhaps a heading three. Great. I'm going to go over to the style now. I'm just going to line everything into the center. I'm actually going to give it a bit of padding all around. So it's the shape of whatever image I want to put behind. It'll probably be a landscape image, a bit like that one there. So let's go over to the advanced. That's always where you'll find padding. And if you've got the chain highlighted, it'll do all four at once. And that's the default. Let's perhaps put 30 pixels in all around. Not too bad, I might up it a little bit top and bottom. So let's uncheck the chain. Now let's maybe make it 50 on top and 50 on the bottom. Obviously, fix yours exactly how you want to do that. Okay, and to make this work today, we're actually going to put the image that we want to use inside the column. So let's go into the column and go over to Style. Background type, I'm going to hit the little paintbrush for classic. Here we can add an image. Drag over whatever image you want. And I'm going to select it. Image size. I'm going to make medium large to save a bit of space. Position. I'm going to have my center center. Fantastic. Don't want it to repeat. And I want it to cover the whole thing. So let's change that to cover. There we go. Great. Well, we've got our image in there. If I hover over, you'll notice that the actual text module has got a gap around the top here. So let's replicate that so we've got no image spilling out behind our little text module there. Still in the column. I'm going to take away any padding by putting a zero in the padding. Well, I'm going to give it a margin all round. Well, let's try 10 pixels. That looks about right. Yep. Now we've got them lined up. The actual text editor module and the background image are taking up the same real estate. Great. Well, I can't really see that text. So let's go back into the text module. I'm going to go over to advanced. This is where we'll find the background. I'm going to give it a background color by clicking on the classic brush again, clicking on the color itself. And I just want a black on mine. That's fine. But I want the text to be standing out a bit more. So let's go into our style. Here's the typography. Text color just above it. I'm going to make that white. Great. But of course, what we want to do is see the image initially and then have this module fade in over the top when they put their mouse on it. So still in the text editor module, I'm going to go over to the advanced and we'll give it a CSS class name. I'm going to call it image h h for hover one, perhaps call yours what you want. It wants to be unique, though. Now that we've done that, we can actually target it with some CSS code. So I'm going to copy that, copy the class name, Control-C. I'm using the Pro version of Elementor today, 
with a custom CSS panel. If you're using the free, you won't have this here. You can put this CSS in your customizer. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So we gave it that class name. All class names have a dot or a period in front of them. Then the class name that we just copied. And we need to open and close some curly brackets. Inside, we can tell it what we want the actual element to do. So initially, I don't want to see it at all. So I'm going to say opacity, colon, zero. Make it invisible. As you can see, our picture is turned up there. Great. But when they hover over it, I want it to come back. So if I copy all of this from the dot to the closing curly bracket, control C, paste it down below. Just after the one of image H1 with no gap, I'm going to put a colon in there, the word hover. And I'm going to make it opacity one, which will bring it back. Now, when I hover over it, you can see it's bringing it back like that. But it's actually coming in really, really quickly. I'd like to slow it down for a bit of grace. And I can do that with transition duration. But we need to do that in the regular state, not the hover state. So I'll go to my last line of code, make sure there's a semicolon on the end. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to say transition duration. And if it prompts you, you can just click on it. Let's perhaps give this one three quarters of a second. 0.75 S. Now when I hover over it, that's a little bit more graceful. And you can slow it down and speed it up however you want. Now let's just check this on the front end. I'm going to update. And hit the little eyeball to preview changes. Now if we roll down, there's our new little image. When I hover, don't forget that code I'll put down below the video for anybody that wants to use it. You're welcome to copy paste as you wish. Now for anybody that's not using the pro version of Elementor, you can do this by going down to your dashboard, down to appearance and customize. That will take us to this page here. Right at the bottom, you'll see additional CSS. I'm using the Hello theme, the free theme from Elementor themselves. Once inside the additional CSS, you can just pop that code in here. It'll work exactly the same way. If yours doesn't have an additional CSS panel, have a look at the documentation for your theme. There's usually a way of doing it. Great. Well, let's get on with our next one. We're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go into this column. I'm going to add a background image. Go over to style and background. Hit the little paintbrush. Let's add another little image. And I'm actually going to duplicate our text module here and we'll use the same one again and just to adjust the code. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to duplicate. And I'm going to drag one of them across here. It doesn't matter which one. They're both identical. Great. And again, we've got a bit of the image spilling out over the top of that. So let's just adjust that in our column once more. Back to the column over to advance. We took all the padding away by putting a zero in there with the chain check. And we gave it 10 pixels all around. Fantastic. And of course, that image. I'm going to make it a bit smaller again. Position center, center. No repeat. And I want it to cover. Great, that works fine. Now ours is just zooming in there because it's the CSS is working for the one before. I'm going to go back in there and let's change that class name. And that will take away any CSS, CSS effects we've got on there. In the text editor, advanced tab. There's the class name we gave the first one. Let's make this number two. It should come back as soon as I put the two in there. Great. Well, this time I actually want it to spin. So again, I'm going to go down to the custom CSS. Let's delete everything we've got there. And it's a class name dot image H2. We'll open some curly brackets. This time I actually want to use the same code for the opacity part, because I don't want to see it. For... So it's opacity, 
colon zero. As you can see, or as you can't see, because it's disappeared, it's disappeared. And we're going to do exactly the same again. I'm going to copy the whole thing from the dot to the curly bracket, drop down a couple, put it back in there, create the hover state by this time, cursor at the end of the two, no gap, full colon, and the word hover, no gap between any of that. And we want to bring it back on hover. This time I actually want it to spin. So we can use a bit of transform rotate with that. So I'm going to drop down, make sure you've got a semicolon on there. I'm going to say transform, colon. I want to rotate, put some round brackets at the end of the rotate there. And we can rotate it by X amount of degrees. I want it to spin around once, let's say 360 degrees, DEG for degrees. Now I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it in our hover state and tell it don't want it to transform at all. So I'm just going to replace the 360 with a zero there. But if we hover over, you might notice that nothing's actually happening. It's not rotating. It actually is, but it's doing so quickly you can't see it. So again, I'm going to use a bit of transition duration for that. We'll slow it down quite considerably. And again, it's prompted us. I'll pop that in there. This time I'm going to slow it down even more to perhaps 1.2 seconds, 1.2 S. Pop the semicolon on the end. Now if I hover over it, you'll see that it's spinning around. But it's kind of spilling out of our column there, and I don't want that. See the corners are spilling out top, bottom, right, and left. We can fix that by hiding the overflow. If we go into the column, I'm going really to give this column us over in the advanced, I'm going to give this column a CSS class of OVH for overflow hidden. And we'll put a bit of custom CSS down here. It's a class name, so it has a dot or a period. Then the class name, OVH. We'll open and close some curly brackets. I'm going to tell it to hide all the overflow. So I'm going to say overflow, colon, hidden. Now when I roll over this thing, you will see that it's kind of containing it within the column itself, which is just what I want. Great. Well, there's our second one. The next one, we're actually going to flip in in a different direction. So I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to go back to my little text module right here. I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm going to drag one of them across, doesn't matter which one. So I've got all the code in there already. I'm going to go into the column. We'll do what we normally do with these columns. You can actually copy the column styles by click right clicking on the column. Hit copy. Now right click on the new column, paste style. And it's copied our column styles from the previous one there. OK, to make this flip in while we're in the column, let's just change out that image. Over to style. I'm going to grab that background image and we'll pop in a different one. There we go. Now I only need to change one tiny thing to have this flipping in a different direction. Let's go into the actual module itself. I'm going to change the class name over in advanced to image three. Now I may as well do it in the text too. Not sure if I did it in the second one. We'll check on that in a minute. And if we go down and look at our custom CSS here, I'm going to leave pretty much everything the same. But I'm going to just rotate it around the X axis. They've got an X axis and Y axis. It's a capital X. And the same for rotate there. Capital X right on the end of the E. Now we need to change our class names from a two to a three. Now, if I roll over it, you'll see it spins in like that. And we got the same duration value as well. Looks like I got that wrong as well. That's a three, not a two. Let's just check this one here. That's yeah, we need to change that one as well. We'll change that one from a one to a two. Let's update, save all our changes now. 
And we'll take a look on the front end. We'll roll on down. There's our new images. Here's our first one, simple fade in. Here's our second one, spinning. And here's our third one, twisting. There you go, guys. There's three simple hover effects that you can achieve with your Elementor really easy. Don't forget all the codes down below. You can just copy and paste it if you want to. So I hope you've enjoyed this today, found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.